Hello, hello. You are the gorgeous, amazing, astonishing narrative breadth of this opera for us, and the responsibility to guide us through the piece. What kind of pressure does that put on you? How does it feel? Yeah, it's a lot of pressure um, to basically tell the whole story and be with the audience the whole time. It's, it's quite amazing. But it's such an epic story to tell. It, no doubt, and I love how it just pulls us right in. You are a trained opera singer. Yes. And while we don't get to hear you actually sing today, we still hear your incredible, wonderful voice supporting. <laughs> and it's so central to this show. Describe your approach to the speaking role on the stage as a met and sure. terms of support, rejection. Yeah, it kind of feels Wagnerian, honestly. It feels like wow. Wagnerian recit. It's very uh, trippy in a way. And uh, you have to fill the whole space and uh, really <coughs> hear yourself in the space. And the same way with singing, really. You still just, warm up? Yes. Well, yeah, I think more, more, because it's all middle voice, so it's kind of a strange experience. Uh, there's yeah. no high notes, no low notes. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So any special kind of training that you're doing to develop the speaking voice, it's the same. Yeah, it's very similar, and the same support, and you know, but yeah. but it's hard for sure. So to those watching, you they may not know how much of an unusual resume that you have because you have done opera, you've done Broadway where you played Lurch yes. in the uh, Adams Family. That's, that's with a uh, Phelan uh, McDermott directed that as well, so the same director. And you've done sitcoms as well. Yeah, yeah. So what, when the call comes to do a Philip Glass opera, I've not met the Met. What what pulls you into oh, that? Oh, I mean, it's it's my absolute dream. I've wanted to work here forever, and Philip Glass is my very favorite living composer, and Phelan is my favorite director. So this is an absolute dream to be here. Yeah, you've worked with Philip Glass a lot before. Yeah, this is our seventh production together, and um, ten years now working with Phelan as well. Oh, and he's he's the best. In, yeah, <laughs> you're <laughs> you part know. of the dream yeah. team here. Part yeah. of the dream team. So even though you're not singing, Philip Glass has inscribed the spoken lines like a, a rule. So yes. what kind of, is it like recitative? It gives you a lot of freedom? It truly is. And uh, we, I have to watch Karen, the conductor, because there are times when I see that she starts a four pattern that I have three measures to finish before the orchestra explodes. Um, so it's all really timed out and you really have to be a musician with it. It's quite complicated. And on top of that, you're one of the soloists who has to learn how to juggle. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have a on that about how... Yeah, um, I learned to juggle for this show. Um, Sean Gandini and the troupe taught me. Um, I was a kid who never threw or caught. I didn't do sports. I was a piano kid, so it was quite terrifying. <laughs> and, you know... Now, they told me at the start of the show they can teach you in about three minutes. Is oh, that true? that's a lie. It's yeah. a lie. I think it's <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And so, <laughs> No, one of the things in this piece that is so important is the ritual yes. of, of this. And certainly that's in the beginning in particular. We're cast into this world right away. Yes. You have actually gotten a tattoo of one of these sort of hieroglyphic, yeah. one of these things. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about it? I think we're going to see a, a photo. Yeah, it is. Uh, the tattoo is the opening projection for my first soliloquy. So it's a winged sun. And uh, we've been doing this show since 2016 now. So. Uh, it's just very special. This is our fourth time doing it, and I wanted to honor that on my I, body forever. <laughs> I love it, I, and I loved it where you placed it a, a, across your collar. Yeah, it goes right under this necklace, so you yeah. can't actually see it. In Does it show. have specific, a specific meaning? Uh, a it's symbol? royalty and confidence and grounding and kind of everything that we want to feel when we're on stage. And so if you go on in your life, it's going to be a lovely yeah, souvenir yeah. at that. Now, where do you have people watching? Today? All over the world. I'm so grateful for the support. There's just thousands of people watching all over the world. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Is it, well, how does it feel to going live into the theater? Oh, I have to it, say? Especially because I have to say what, what I've enjoyed so much about this today is that it really feels like we're introducing a piece that a lot of people, it's not in, yeah. in the standard repertoire. Yeah, we're introducing it to the world. It, it's a very special moment, and to have so many people joining in on that journey is very special. And we have Akhenaten fans that have seen it in London twice, in LA, and they follow along. So I predict they're going to become like deadheads along yeah. the time and become groupies for <laughs> yeah. this, because we can't get enough. Yeah. Zachary, thank you so much. Thank you. Toy, toy, toy for the last. Thank you so much. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. At the end of the